Good morning and welcome to our service on July 5th and uh, we hope you had a good Independence Day celebration yesterday and that the fireworks weren't too loud for all the animals in the house. You know what I mean. Anyway, we're here to celebrate God's presence with us in the midst of our world today. We want to uh, invite you now, if you uh, want to participate in Holy Communion, you will need either your grape juice or your wine and some bread and uh, be prepared at that time of the service and we'll give you instructions on how to do Holy Communion in your small group setting or your family or by yourself. We will talk about all those ways. So now sit back, relax, and let us open our hearts in praise to God who is worthy of our praise.
It's time for joys and concerns. There are parish announcements for the coming week. Uh, first off, I want to talk about what happens next Sunday. On Sunday, July the 12th, we will hold a regathering at 9 o'clock and at 11 o'clock. We do invite you to come. We do ask that you register for the service so that we have your attendance uh, counted. Uh, an email will go out from the office on early Wednesday morning. The deadline to uh, click on the sign up genius and record your presence will be at Friday at one o'clock. Uh, if you do not have access to sign up genius when you click on that link, please call the church office to make your reservation for either the nine o'clock or the 11 o'clock service. And we look forward to seeing you back here. It's not gonna be the normal service, so we'll still have a service broadcast at 11 o'clock on Sunday. So um, we look forward to that. Pray for us in this time of regathering and um, that we can meet the needs of uh, many in our community. Um, also, in our prayers this week, I, I want to thank you for the prayers for my mother who had a heart procedure done this week over in Chesterfield, Virginia, uh, for my daughter-in-law who has been at St. Elizabeth's Hospital uh, with uh, preterm. Uh, she is, uh, had, had gone into labor and they pretty well stopped that. Um, but we'll see what happens uh, this week. Um, and also prayers for Lindsay Rawlings who finally got a good report on her on her pneumonia and its healing, and so prayers for her. And for Mike Howard, who is uh, back from Nashville, uh, recovering at home, and uh, for him in Maryland. And then for all the others that are listening to our prayer concerns, you'll find them in the weekly banner. You can go to our, our website, hopefulchurch.org, click on weekly banner, and you'll see the whole list of everybody in there. So with all those things that are happening this week, we ask that you uh, pray for us. Your church council meets on Tuesday night and uh, we have some decisions to make. So uh, pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to guide our work together. Uh, if you have any news or notes you need to pass on, please email us at um, bfields at hopefulchurch.org or paula at hopefulchurch.org or kelly at hopefulchurch.org. We look forward to hearing from you. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our failures, fears, and weaknesses to God, asking that we be restored to wholeness and peace. God who cares for us all. We confess that we have not loved you and have not cared for ourselves, our neighbors, or the earth you created. Forgive our lack of care and our failure to attend to your creation in us and around us. Take away our fear and our weakness and make us strong witnesses in word and action to your redeeming love. Amen. Our God is merciful, slow to anger, and rich in steadfast love. I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin in the name of Jesus, who restored us to God, our maker. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may you be renewed to the wholeness of life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. And let us pray. O Lord, our God, arrange the course of this world that peace may come and your tr tranquil church rejoice through greater service. Grant this, we pray, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us hear now from the word for today. We are reading from the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. Jesus said, But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard 
a friend of tax collectors and sinners. And yet, wisdom is justified by her deeds. And now we move to verse 25, where Jesus continues to say, At that time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This word of God is good news for all of us today. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, boys and girls. Come on up. Nope, a little bit closer. A little bit closer. Perfect. Well, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Wow. It's almost like I can hear you. <sighs> Miss you guys a lot. Okay, before we get into the children's sermon, we have to go over some important business first. Are you ready? Okay, Vacation Bible School is coming up, and we need you guys to sign up. Well, maybe not you guys, but maybe you can look at the grown-ups who are sitting next to you and say, can you please sign me up for Vacation Bible School? It's going to be awesome. You're going to want to be a part of it. So make sure to go on our Facebook page, the Youth and Family page, and sign up and register so that we can have enough supplies to give you. Okay, enough business. Now let's get down to the gospel lesson. Were you listening to Pastor Blair read the scripture? You were? No? No, you weren't? Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Well, he was talking about rest. And he says that Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And he starts talking about this yoke and it being heavy, but the burden is light. And to be honest with you, as he was talking, I wasn't paying attention either. But I was thinking about something. Do you see this weight that I have here? It's really heavy. Like, <sighs> Pastor Blair, can you come help me? Maybe sometimes you need a friend when things are really heavy and like I, we, we have to work together. Can you help me pick this up? Maybe help you can you. help me pick it up. Okay. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You got it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You see, Sometimes things are really heavy, and even when we have friends around to help us with situations that feel really heavy, they're still really heavy. Our world right now is dealing with some stuff that's really, really heavy. We've got this virus. We're not together in person. We have um, racism happening in our world. We have stuff that is really, really heavy. And my guess is, is that you're kind of like me probably, and you're just feeling tired. Maybe you're tired of being at home, and you're tired of things not being normal, or you're tired of seeing sad things on the TV. I'm with you. You need a break? That's where our gospel lesson comes in today. You see, Jesus knew that the world was heavy because he lived in it. He knew that there would be times that would feel really heavy, like a really heavy weight for us to pick up. And he says, hey, look, even together sometimes you can't bear the load. 
but don't forget, I am with you. And so guys, I know we've got heavy stuff to carry these days. Even for you kids, the world might feel kind of heavy right now. But you know what? God is with you. He's with you right now. He's with you tomorrow and the day after, forever and always, to carry the heavy load so that we can rest. We love you guys, and we know that life is a little bit heavy right now, but we're with you also. Let's say a prayer. Loving God, sometimes the world feels really heavy, like a really heavy weight, and even when we're together, it feels heavy. But God, you are with us. You can carry the heavy load. And so, Lord, for our kids that feel the heaviness of life right now, we pray for rest. Lord, we pray for rest for all of your servants, that you would carry the heavy load. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. We love you guys. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. And all God's people say, Amen. Well, let me start the sermon today by telling you about an, uh, a wonderful legend. And the legend concerns the quiet years in the life of Jesus. You know, the years that were pri uh, prior to that visible ministry when he um, came on the scene when he was about 30 years old. Uh, and the legend claims that Jesus was, of course, a carpenter. And as a carpenter, he was one of the master yoke makers in Nazareth. And people came from miles around for a yoke, hand-carved and crafted by Jesus, the son of Joseph. And when customers arrived with their team of oxen, Jesus would he'd spend a, a lot of time measuring them and the team, their height, the width, the, the space between them, the, and the size of their shoulders. And then within about a week, the team would be brought back and he would carefully place the yoke on their shoulders, uh, the yoke that he'd made, newly, newly made, and he would watch for the rough places. He would smooth out the edges and he fit them perfectly to that particular team of oxen. Think about that. That's the yoke that Jesus invites you and I to take. Do not be misled by the word easy today, for the root word in Greek speaks directly of tailor-made yokes. They were, quote, well-fitting. Uh, and, and the yoke that Jesus invites us to take, the yoke that brings rest to the weary souls, is one that is made exactly to our lives and our hearts. And the yoke he invites us to wear fits us well. It does not rub us, nor does it cause us to develop, uh, uh, to develop sore spirits, and, and it's always designed for two. His yokes were always designed for two. And our yoke partner is none other than Christ himself. I want you to listen to this part of the reading again from the, from the uh, translation of the Bible that's known as the message. And it's, it goes like this. It says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Now, that begs a question. Do you feel as though somehow today you are kind of trapped on a, a never-ending treadmill based on your own efforts to try and somehow earn God's forgiveness, God's approval, and, and God's acceptance. Is that you? Does that fit you in your life right now? That is how I believe many people perceive 
the Christian religion. And if you are trying to earn your own forgiveness and thinking that God is constantly kind of mad at you, I'm here to tell you that that is not the heart of God. You have a yoke partner. This translation has Jesus speaking of these things called the unforced rhythms of grace. He means that there is an ease and an enjoyment when you walk in his grace, when you are yoked to, together with him. And this is in contrast to that struggle and strain that is found in what could be your own self-energy and your own self-effort at doing it yourself. There is such rest when you know that there is nothing that you can do to earn his forgiveness. <laughs> Give up. Give up on your own self-righteousness. Yoke with Jesus and, oh, and with open arms and an open heart, receive his forgiveness. The key to getting out of a cycle of sin and defeat is to receive and to stop beating yourself up. Receive and stop punishing yourself because your sins have already been punished on the body of another. And his name is Jesus, our beautiful Lord and Savior. No wonder, no wonder the gospel is called the good news. When you understand God's grace and forgiveness, you will understand the difference between obligation and relationship. Under the old covenant of the law, right living is done out of what is called religious obligation. And under the new covenant of grace, everything that we do is now birthed out of an inward motivation that flows directly from a love relationship with Jesus. My friend, God, I'm going to tell you this, God is not a legalist. He doesn't want you to read his word just because he said so as a religious obligation. No, he wants you to experience his love and to spend time in his word, his love letter to you, because you want to enjoy his sweet presence. You can read his word out of legalism and to try to earn God's forgiveness and acceptance or you can do it out of a yoked relationship because you know you have been forgiven. The reality is, when you don't read the Bible, you should not be feeling guilty. You should be feeling hungry. And that's very different. You yearn for it. You want it. You want to taste its goodness. So Jesus invites you to experience these unforced rhythms of grace. Keep company with him, yoke with him, and, and you'll learn to live freely and to live lightly. So let me turn to this question. What do you know about grace? Have you ever thought about the phrase, learn the unforced rhythm of grace? Well, maybe you've just heard it for the first time today, so you might not have thought about it too much. But I've been giving a lot of thought to celebrate, to, to uh, re recalibrating my life. And those words from that verse have intrigued me deeply. It sounds light. It sounds easy, peaceful, and restful. It sounds, quite honestly, like just exactly what I need. So how about you? Because I can tell you this, life can get messy, busy, difficult, painful, and at times just downright overwhelming. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> life is messy. Life can be overwhelming. And in the midst of it, I'm going to tell you, because I know we grow exhausted and we get needy. You may come to recognize your own fragility during that time. Okay, okay, it's not like I haven't been in this place before in my life. Similar feelings brought on by different kinds of situations. I, I have found myself needy and fragile in the past, but my response to it often was one of choosing to just keep pushing through. You know what I mean? 
I did not want to give into it. I wanted to, I wanted to stand strong even though I felt as though I would just crumple into a heap at any moment. This time I'm realizing my neediness is a place to invite in God's grace, to receive the yoke. He is waiting for me to do just that each time I get to this place. He wants me to learn that unforced rhythms of his grace. Grace, it's about him. Actually, the word describes so much of who he is. It is about his love. It is about his presence. It's about his going with me. It is not about me trying to do anything on my own, no. It is about connection, the connection of my abiding in him and he in me. It is about my trusting him. Doesn't it seem like it always comes back to that one little word, trust? I have to trust him enough to allow him to show me the way through and to guide me in a gentle way. And in, in that, he helps me to know that I am not all alone. His presence, his grace help me to know I do not have to go it alone. The, 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 the pressure is, is off. I can stop. I can cry. I can say, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. I can be real and vulnerable. The rhythm, the cadence of his sure-footedness is steady, not racing, not rushing, just moving me forward. He isn't forcing me and he isn't pushing me. He isn't dragging me along unwillingly. No, he is by my side and always with me. It has become so vivid to me now. His grace, his love are always here. He is with me. He has been with me. But I have been walking way too fast. Super focused on the mission at hand. Pressing on to get my own way. And I, I have missed the tenderness of his gracious presence. This time... I see it. I feel it. I, I truly am learning of the unforced rhythms of his grace. His grace is for me all of the time. Yes, we learn about grace mostly from the cross, right? But I am realizing my depth of neediness for tender grace in all of life. I am looking for it more and more as I walk through the rough spots in life. So how about you? Is your life making you aware of your neediness? Specifically, your need for his tender grace in your life today. The picture this verse gives talks about the yoke. A yoke we may, a, a yoke we may be slightly familiar with is that yoke that is placed on those two oxen at work. But why? Why is that yoke there? It's because... The stronger one is showing the way to the weaker one. This gives us a picture of guidance and, and helping to, to carry the weight. Yoke in this reference here also speaks of the yoke of possibly a rabbi. The yoke of a, of a rabbi was his teachings, his word. And if you chose to follow him, it was said that you came under his yoke. This is another helpful picture. When we come to follow Jesus, we come under the yoke of his teachings. And Jesus' yoke of teaching isn't heavy and it's not ill-fitting. It isn't filled with expectation and obligation to fulfill the law on our own because Jesus has fulfilled it for us through his work on the cross. And now as we take on his yoke, he walks with us through life, gently leading us in his perfect way. He takes off that heavy yoke of sin that weighs us down and leads us on paths of righteousness. I can stop striving under his yoke. I have nothing to prove. 
He knows my true nature, and apart from him, I can do nothing. And as I trust him, and as I walk in his yoke, I can rest when I stop fighting for my way or struggling to make it under the weight of my life's burdens. You see, he carries the burdens for us. And ah, yes, with the weight of sin and striving lifted, oh, we can rest in the saving grace that he provides. True rest, abandoning control, choosing his yoke, choosing the way of trust. I am not good at this. In fact, I often struggle and strive to have my own way, as most of us do. And I choose the yoke of sin, and the burden is heavy, and I have to once again come to the place of realizing I can't do it. I need him. I need his tender grace, and I need the rest that I find in him. His yoke is easy when I choose to trust his heart and walk in his way. His love calls us, and it says, come to me. Will you run to him, or will you find your own way? Oh, I've run my own way, and I've done that way too often, but his grace definitely, definitely for me has been the better way. It is there that we can find the rest. So I want to ask, do you need a challenge this week? Maybe this is a hard one. The challenge is to trust that his yoke brings comfort and rest. Can you let go long enough to receive the greatest gift ever given? Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for inviting us to come under your yoke and to walk with you in your grace, to give over the control of our lives to you, and to find rest and strength and purpose in your love. Let your grace guide our hearts, our minds, and our thoughts this day and this week as we walk in that yoke with you. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen.
And now let us publicly profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Offering is a significant act of worship. We know as believers that everything in the heavens and earth is the Lord's. And all he does is ask for some of it to be offered back. And so we offer many ways for you to continue to give. You can either text your giving, donate on our website, mail a check into the church office, or drop one by. We thank you for your gifts as they continue to go towards the mission and ministry of Hopeful Church and how the Lord continues to lead us. And now it comes time for Holy Communion, so we invite you to get out your bread and your wine as we come to this table to dine on the flavors of grace, to rest in how God meets us here. And so it was, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, in the same way, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to them to drink, saying, take and drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And now let us go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, you are a God who is mighty. Lord, you are a God who created the Rocky Mountains and knows how many grains of sand are on the beach. You paint the sunrises and the sunsets. You're big enough to carry the heavy burdens of our life. Lord, you took on the heaviest burden of death and you carried it. Lord, as we come to this, your table, fill us with your grace to continue on. Lord God, your servants are weary. Give us rest. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your grace that we can continue to serve. Loving God, in a season when our, um, our culture is celebrating freedom, Lord, we pray that we would lean into the freedom that we have because of your grace for us. That we would lean into the freedom that you have given us from ourselves, from our sin, from this world. Lord, and that we would continue to live into the freedom in whatever lies before us. Loving God, we thank you for a country where we can gather and worship publicly. Lord, we pray for our world. Lord, we pray for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we pray for your justice to reign We thank you, Lord, for who you are. 
Loving God, you are big enough to carry the burdens of this world, but yet, Lord, you are personal enough to know the intricacies of our hearts. Lord, you know all that we bring to this table, the, the requests that we name, the, the things that we carry to lay at your feet. Lord, today we especially pray for Mike Howard, Lindsay Rawlings, Lindsay and Taylor Fields, and Virginia Hahn. Lord, we pray for healing and for strength, for endurance. We pray for hope. Lord, we pray for those requests that we haven't even uttered out of our mouths. We pray for all of our doctors, nurses, and CNAs, and lab techs, and all who serve in health care. We pray for our military forces stationed here and deployed abroad. We pray for a day when uh, there will be no need for weapons, when, when guns can be turned into plowshares as your prophets have foretold. Lord, but until that day comes, we will continue to praise you because even as times change, you never do. You remain the same. And so, Lord, now we come to you as your children because that is what you have called us in our holy baptisms. And we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table. Jesus is our host here. This is the table where we come as empty vessels where maybe you have been poured out this week, where you have nothing left to give. And friends, I have good news for you. I have good news, and that good news is Jesus promises to meet us here. He promises to fill us here. He promises to restore our weary souls here. Are you tired and heavy laden? Here is where we taste the rhythms of his grace. And I have the privilege of serving you. Jesus has given me this great privilege to serve those of you today who have no one there to serve you. I get to say, take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now in your home altars, in your home churches gathered together, I pray that you would bless one another in the name of our Lord and Savior, the host of this feast, the bearer of the heavy yoke, Jesus Christ. Amen.
And now may this, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace and peace now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his presence and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. to God.